Fret not yourselves because of evil doers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. So right off the bat, this psalm is a special one. This psalm is a, an acrostic psalm, meaning that each line, each phrase of this psalm coincides with the Hebrew alphabet. You know, for us over here, we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and on. Um, and, and in the Hebrew, it's not those same ones, but uh, this psalm lines up one after the other with the Hebrew alphabet. It was a way to remember, it was a way to uh, to, to honor the Lord with, with your writing and honor the Lord with remembering um, these psalms. So right off the top, it says, Fret not yourself because of evildoers, be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass. And it says, and wither like the green herb. You know, for, for us, this is something that everybody deals with. Everybody deals with this. Uh, everybody looks at the people who doing wrong, the people who are doing illegal activities, the, but yet they're making it. They've got a new car. They've got the new house. They've got uh, all this money. And you're over here trying to stay on the straight and narrow. You're trying to follow what the Lord says. And it doesn't seem to be working out as good as it is for the other guy. So the Lord is saying right now through this psalm, he's saying, uh, trust in the Lord. Don't trust in evildoers. Don't trust in evil. Don't trust in a wrongdoing. But trust in the Lord because all that stuff that they have will soon fade. It will wither like the green grass. This committing your way to the Lord. What does that look like for you? How are you committing your way to the Lord? Um, this is the life of a Christian. We follow the Lord. We follow the Bible and what the Bible says. It's God's word. We follow God's word. We don't follow what culture or what the world has to offer. We follow God. It goes on and it says, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself. It tends only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. There's a sense of us as Christians persevering and, and waiting patiently for the Lord. Um, and even this saying, be still before the Lord. Um, I, I don't know about you, but I'm in a time where my mind is racing all the time. I'm worried. I'm, I'm stressed. Um, I'm not alone. I'm sure you are too. The Lord is calling for us to be still before him, to trust in him, because everything, every wicked way will soon come to an end. Wickedness comes to an end. But for those who wait on the Lord, we shall, like it says in verse 9, we shall inherit the land. We should inherit God's promise to us. In Romans 12, 18, it says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. Um, this is the call that we have to uh, refrain from getting angry about these situations. Refrain from getting angry about the evildoer that is relaxing right now. About the wrongdoer that is stress-free right now. It's easy for us to get angry. It's easy for us to um, be upset. Um, but it says to forsake wrath. Romans we need in Romans twelve eighteen. We need to, as far as it depends on us, live peaceably with everybody. In verse ten, it says, "In just a little while, the wicked will be no more. Though you look carefully at his place, he will not be there." Um, for, to live a wicked way, to to live in evil, means that you have forsaken God, because in order to live for God, you have to deny evil. You have to repent of your sin. Uh, granted, we fall into sins, but it's a trap and we get out of it. We don't live with it. We, we're not good with it. Um, and so for us, when we think about what it would look like, understand that, that for those that believe in Jesus, we've turned from our wicked ways. We've repented and now we're following Jesus Christ. Um, it's different. Our, our 
eternity will be with him, will be in heaven, will be with God. But for the wicked, there will be an end to the comfort that they experience. There'll be an end to the stress-free life that they have. It'll be an end when the Lord judges the wicked. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in an abundant peace. The word meek is special. Meek is strength under control. It's power restrained. We trust in the Lord's timing. We don't take matters into our own hands. We don't get wrathful. We don't get vengeful. We don't bring out anger. We trust God that he will fight the battles. Because it says that we don't battle against flesh and blood, but we battle against darkness, and principalities, and spiritual powers. We don't battle against people. For us that are Christians, we sacrifice ourselves for people. We don't have that ability or that right to be able to be angry or wrathful. We're to be meek. In verse 12, 13, and 14, it says, The wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend their bows to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those whose way is upright. Their sword shall enter their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. This is a common theme, a common thing that happens throughout the Bible, that those who lash out wickedly at others uh, uh, hurt themselves in the process. It's like that old Chinese proverb that says, if you dig a grave for your enemy, make sure you dig two. This is what happens when we lash out, when we violently attack and we take matters into our own hands, we enact vengeance on somebody, um, it eventually or immediately hurts us. Haman did it in the Bible in, in the book of Esther where he created a hangman's noose for Mordecai but he ended up hanging from his hangman's noose uh, the same as Saul as, as Saul's attacking David Saul ends up dying it's it's this common thread throughout the Bible if you enact violence to another violence comes on you if you live by the gun you die by the gun that's the understanding of it better is the little that the righteous has than the abundance of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the blameless and their heritage will remain forever. They are not put to shame in evil times. In the days of famine, they have abundance, but the wicked will perish. The enemies of the Lord are like the glory of the pastures. They vanish like smoke, they vanish away. The wicked borrows, but does not pay back. But the righteous is generous and gives for those blessed by the Lord shall inherit the land, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. This is an, another look at the wicked are here for a time, just like the green grass is, is here in spring, but in the winter is gone. It's the same thing. It's like the smoke from the fire. It's here for a moment, but it fades out. It goes up and, and is gone. We might look at the situations around us, the wickedness around us, um, say the politicians around us that are super wicked but yet are prospering completely. We look at this kind of stuff and we say, Lord, how long? How long, Lord? Um, it's a season. It's a, a little while. Uh, the Lord will never leave those who are His, okay? We've, he's given us His promises. He's given, up his, given us His covenant. So when we trust Him and wait for Him and rest in Him, we find true peace. Verse 23 says, The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong, for the Lord upholds his hand. Our lives, our minutes, our hours, our days, our months, our years, they are established by the Lord. And we can trust him that he's got a better understanding than we do. And we can have faith that he's got something planned for us better than anything that we could ever do everything that we could ever think or imagine. It goes on in 25 by saying, I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. He is ever lending generously and his children become a blessing. David, little backstory, David was escaping Saul's sword for 13 years. He was on the run. He was trying to evade the attacks of Saul. For 13 years. David, he lived to be 70 years old. And, and in, the, in the word it says he lived a long, full of years life. And, and, and so he's been old. He's been young. 
Now he's seen so much, but he knows that the Lord will never leave those who are his. If you believe on the Lord, you have the assurance that you are his, that you are his, you are his. So then it goes on, turn away from evil and do good. So shall you dwell forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. It's the same theme. It's the same idea going through this acrostic psalm. It's this idea of the evildoer. It might seem like it's all good for him. But his season is coming. His times are coming. But for those who trust in the Lord, we wait patiently and we trust and we have faith and we uh, can rest and have peace knowing that the Lord will never leave us and that we have an inheritance. And when we keep our strength under control, uh, we will inherit the land. We will inherit the kingdom of God. And so then it says in 30, the mouth of the righteous utters wisdom and his tongue speaks justice. The law of his God is in his heart. His steps do not slip. I got to say this. If you have God's word in here, if you know God's word, if it's in your mind, if you memorize scripture, if you are thinking about the word of God, if you are daily reading the word of God, I guarantee you this, uh, your steps will not be slipping like if you weren't. Your steps will be sure. Your Christian walk will be true. You will be able to have power in life. When we walk without the Lord's word, with when we walk without the Lord's uh, words in our heart, uh, we can easily stumble. We can easily fall because we're essentially giving the devil a foothold. We're giving darkness a foothold. But when we truly ingest God's word, and we have it in the inside, and we're able to bring it, up, bring it up throughout our day, we won't stumble. In verse 32, it says, The wicked watches for the righteous and seeks to put him to death. The Lord will not abandon him to his power or let him be condemned when he is brought to trial. There might be a day soon, Christian, where you are standing before a judge and the judge is telling you, renounce Jesus Christ, stop going to church, stop preaching the gospel. The Lord is even going to be with you then. He will be with you. He will be guiding you. He will be giving you the words to say. In verse 34, wait for the Lord and keep his way and he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will look on when the wicked are cut off. I have seen a wicked ruthless man spreading himself like a green laurel tree but he passed away and behold he was no more though i sought him he could not be found mark the blameless and behold the upright for there is a future for the man of peace but transgressors shall be altogether destroyed the future of the wicked shall be cut off the salvation of the righteous is from the lord he is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. The man of peace can walk in peace and walk without anxiety, without anxious feelings, without stress, without worries. Uh, because I don't know about you, but I can look around our world today and get worried. I can look around our culture today and be frightened about the future. I can look at our politicians and at our celebrities, and I can look at the people even leading our churches at times. And I can see that the wicked are only here for time. For you today, I hope that you will, one, trust that the Lord will never leave you and has the best for you and to live a life God honoring able to wait patiently for the plans of the Lord to unfold let's pray Lord thank you so much for this psalm today thank you for the fact that uh, Lord we can trust you and we can wait for you and and even when we see evildoers all around us, when we see corrupt politicians, when we see um, different issues throughout our culture, abortion and gay marriage and all this other stuff, uh, we know, Lord, that you will preserve us. You will keep us. And Lord, we will inherit your kingdom. 
So Lord, we give you all the honor, all the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, see you guys next week. Thank you.